Hi guys, okay, so a couple of weeks ago, I had done an AMA regarding my career, how I started, where I started, when I started, what I studied. So I have all the questions here. I'm just gonna go through them one by one and answer them for you. Okay, the first one is, uh, tell us about your first job slash internship. So when I left college, I interned at many places. Um, obviously Vogue was the first one I um, get my application to my CV. However, uh, the first internship I got was at Spenta Multimedia. I was put in the business development team. However, I did not want to be in the business development team. So I've asked for a transfer to editorial where um, I was under a lot of people, um, was there for about three months. Um, towards the end of it, my application from um, to Vogue actually got confirmed. And then I joined Vogue. Uh, from there, um, I did a little stint at Times of India for one of their campaigns and then I got my first job and my first job was at Diamantina Fine Jewels. It's a diamond jewelry company. Uh, I love it till date. I love the owners. I love all of them so much and um, I've always maintained good relationships. Post that was my second job which is me at Miss Malini. <laughs> for six years <laughs> okay this one's really nice um how did you decide that your current job is the one for you um that's where i think internships are so important and necessary uh, i was never the person who knew just right off the bat that i'm leaving college and i'm doing this 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 i had zero meaning zero idea what i wanted to do in life in general uh, but i did know i was i loved magazines i loved um fashion i love beauty i was so mesmerized by that whole concept and during my first job at diamantina i started looking at a lot of youtube videos and obviously you you would look at youtube videos before but this was back in maybe 2000 13 or 14 where I actually dabbled at makeup hair started getting creative that way and I didn't go to any beauty school what I learned is through YouTube through reading articles through watching and through learning from other mediums um, when I joined Miss Malini I felt like this was the place for me because that's where I could release my creativity I could be who I am, whether it was me with braces for like two and a half years, I was still, I still knew the kind of person I was. I was never insecure, unsure of myself. So that's how I knew I, it was a right fit for me. Okay, this is another one. How do you get over the what will people think mindset when blogging? You don't. You eventually develop thick skin. Um, no one kind of warned me when I got into it. Um, I didn't really consider myself a YouTuber but when I started making videos for the Miss Malini's YouTube channel I had braces on. In fact I joined Miss Malini one month before getting my braces fit in and I had gaps in my teeth. I had one gap here, one here, on here and on here. But then you soon realize that you're better than that and you develop thick skin and when you do that um, you don't care about what people think you kind of do it because it brings you joy but it does take time I'm not gonna deny that it's not like a quick recipe for that you just have to keep dabbling and going at it pretending that everything the person saying negatively you're taking it in a positive way you're changing it around and you're just gonna do your best next time okay because the way i think about it is that like time heals time changes time time is your biggest asset like no one is going to remember five years down the line that oh my god she said this then like no people move on it's life okay this question how to get followers and how to earn money most of the comments i mean most of the questions are about how to gain followers, how to earn money, how to get brands to send you free stuff. This is long. Get ready, get your popcorn. Okay. Um, basically, the way you earn followers, firstly, you should change your mindset. It's not about the followers you have. While yes, it is, it is 
true that brands do reach out to your basis the follow account you have but what's really important is your engagement how your reach is okay the kind of audience you have the kind of um the gender you have um all of that really makes a difference to the to the way brands will approach you and reach you now how to get followers is a tricky business i mean i'm still learning i don't have like a billion followers but not a billion that's like not even think about that anyway um you try your best to be authentic give if you're into the whole beauty segment you give real reviews you give you talk about um products that honestly make a difference to your life your skin care just be real there when it comes to fashion brands or um, any kind of um products centered around style what you have to do is um wear them show how you would carry that style in your unique way um again for me the principle is if you are you people will gravitate towards you and follow you your audience is different than your uh, whatever your co-workers audience your it everyone's audience is different but that's depending on the content you put out so at the end of the day content trumps everything else so as long as you are creating good content followers will come brands will come um and with the brands the money will come so and and it's a slow start no one owns money right off the bat um you work hard like i've after building it for about what now 6 years 5 years i've started earning money alongside my job and it's and it's hard like i'm not a full time influencer but it's a hard gig and respect to everyone okay the other part of it how to get awesome stuff for free <laughs> number one it's not it's not you just getting awesome stuff think about it this way that the brand trusts you to deliver their product to your audience like i said everyone's audience is different right so they are going to approach you because you have xyz kind of audience someone else because they can offer that tg or that genre of the audience so you don't just get free stuff you have to number one work for it you have to um be nice in firstly to brands to prs to anybody out there because i mean that's their job that's their job at the end of it. i don't know why i'm getting so many calls um <laughs> then secondly what you have to do is um you have to always say that okay thank you for that product so you have to post about it but it doesn't just start right off the bat you have to like i said in the previous thing talk about the product give your own review if you're giving a f- ice cream review slowly slowly food brands will start approaching you if you're giving home decor and home living even though that's not your um genre or that's not what you're known for you still i mean everyone loves home decor and living right so you give your okay hey i bought them so i would recommend you first go out and purchase it yourself so that the brand knows that you are invested in them for the first half of it and then the free products will start flowing so i would say just don't become a follower for the free products guys it's just it's not worth it it's not going to bring you joy if you genuinely truly love it the free products will come along but you can also buy products yourself review them see how it is and talk about it okay someone's asked what did you study and what's the one tip to someone who wants to become an influencer um you've heard this before for the one tip meaning don't mimic anybody else be yourself if you like to doodle if you are into art if you're into anything focus on that but at the same time don't neglect other things because you never know when avenues for that will open up um you can be a fashion lover but you can also love music you can also love art you can also love making memes like me i love memes so never really um never really hone you can hone in on your talent but don't 
shy away from wanting to do other things is what I would say. Also, when you're doing those other things, be real, be you, um, show your goofy side, show your personality. If you're loud as hell, sometimes my laugh is ridiculous. Like, I can't hear it sometimes. But it's okay, like, just show your personality. Because, again, people want to see you, your life, what you're about, what your style's like, what inputs you have, that kind of stuff. And what I studied, I I studied sociology in Xavier's. <clears throat> in Xavier's. Um, so, I was there for five years. Um, then I didn't decide to go abroad like everybody else to study further. Um, I stayed back here. I interned a lot, um, three, four places. And then from there, I went on to getting my first job, getting my second job. That's me at Miss Malini and end of story. Um, another frequent question. How did you land a job at Miss Malini? What would you suggest and how do you get in? Um, firstly, to land a job at any place, <laughs> you write to the HR, um, you firstly look at LinkedIn, look at their profile, see they're looking to hire. Even if they're not, you can just make your CV and send it into the HR. If you know of anybody working there, you talk to them, find that out. Um, and how I landed a job at Miss Malini was that I saw a post uh, from an ex-colleague um, who said that they were looking for a writer. Um, I applied. Uh, at that time, it was just for a fashion writer, and I was my I my first love has always been beauty. So I was just like, okay, I'll write for fashion. I mean, I love fashion as well. Uh, soon it became fashion and beauty, and then it became just beauty, and then it became the senior beauty editor, and now I'm the deputy features director, where I kind of take care along with another colleague of mine, the whole lifestyle, fashion, and um, beauty department. Um, what are your educational qualifications and did it help with your work now? Um, I would say my education qualification is literally not worth anything right now in the kind of world we are in. Um, I majored, I was in arts in St. Xavier's, I majored in sociology, um, so not much there. Um, but like I said before, I never really knew what I wanted to be in life, do in life. Not that I was aimless, but I was just someone who never knew what they wanted as a job. So what I did was instead of studying further, doing my master's post uh, graduation, what I did was started interning at a bunch of places. That helped me gain a lot of experience, um, even though they were in different departments. I think if you want to start out interning or working at places, um, gives is more valuable than sometimes a degree. Fair enough, if you want to be a makeup artist, you have to learn the technique, right? You, certain certain qualifications need a degree, need that, that certificate in your hand. Um, but for me, education qualifications weren't really important and for I'm glad I didn't choose that route. Um, uh, I'm glad I stuck to my gut and said that, okay, I want valuable, on ground work experience so that's what i did and um it's taught me a lot how what when did you start or how can i start now um all the hows the who's the what's isn't important what's important is that you you want to do this at that moment in that time with uh, whatever knowledge you have of it so how i started as an influencer slash content creator I feel weird I'm not even I don't know if I'm a full-time influencer I can't say that um, is uh, through my job currently at Miss Malini so what I had done is that in 2015 when I joined I started making a lot of beauty content for the Miss Malini YouTube channel from there what I used to do is I used to obviously post it on the Instagram handle repost it from my handle also then because I was in this media field and I got invited for a lot of press events. From the press events, the products that I tried out, tested out, I spoke about them. 
I said that okay I love this I don't love this this worked for me this probably could work for you but this is how I did my hair this is how I'm doing my winged eyeliner this is a tip you know there there was some kind of information that I gave across to my at that time 500 400 audience uh, I don't know also um, my profile was always open so that wasn't a question of anything but uh, soon I just started getting followers and uh, grew from there and I still do the same thing till date okay this is another how much was your paycheck how much do you get paid number one rude number two um, um, no one's gonna really flat out tell you uh, but at the same time I will tell you that it when I started out it was not much um, internships pitin shit okay um, but that was not what I was after at that time um, I am just I used to always think of it as okay I'm gaining experience I'm gaining exposure till date I will say that exposure trumps a lot of things I'm not saying money doesn't matter of course money matters of course you should be paid what you are worth but you should know what you're worth and through and how you know what you're worth is only through experiences that you can confidently say that yo I'm bringing this to the table this is what I can offer you this is who I am XYZ oh should I miss the question huh. um, so yeah so don't just run after the paycheck um, in the beginning paychecks were not too big soon you kind of grow you learn you um, you see what's out there you see what other places have to offer you do your research uh, you say that okay you know in my with my experience in my role with the kind of work I'm doing I need this and that's your expectation but sometimes it doesn't happen that way so lots of negotiations and you will soon realize how to negotiate also through a lot of your experiences so yeah that's about it but just know that don't go after money especially if you're just starting out um, keep your keep your eye on the ball but at the same time don't lose focus because at the end of the day you want to grow as an individual you want to learn things you want to see things you want to meet people so if the opportunity is great weigh your pros and cons and then choose the job is what i would recommend i love this question how do you manage your work benji idtv regular purse um and you appreciate me thank you i appreciate me too right now um some days are extremely hard i am not going to lie i complain to everyone not everyone but like the people who know me and know my hustle um i'm like oh my god should i do it why am i doing this why am i living two separate lives jobs it's so extremely hard because but at the end of the day i'm just like you know what if i don't hustle now when when will i hustle if i don't gain whatever experience i can through both these mediums because i'm learning a lot in both places right i'm learning to be eventually an entrepreneur with my brand natasha patel but at the same time i'm learning i'm learning business i'm learning content creation i'm learning different avenues in the miss malini field so there is so much to learn and gain so that's why i do what i do and how i manage it is that i am highly organized like i have calendars notepads um checklist in my notepads uh, reminders i know that okay fine if i have a saturday sunday i'm gonna shoot x number of reels and i know the exact reels i'm gonna shoot like i know that i've saved it i've bookmarked it the song the whatever and that's what i do um so because of that i um i like have that energy because i know what i want to do <laughs> okay uh, how did you start growing your personal account apart from work content? So it, initially what I used to do is repost everything I used to do on the Miss Malini page and YouTube and Snapchat onto my Instagram account. Um, soon, like I needed, I wanted to do more and it came as not as a I have to do this, I have to. But it became more as like, oh my god, I want to showcase this. Oh my god, I want to show them this. Oh my god, I want to do this. So because I felt the need to want to share, I love sharing with you guys. So whenever I, l I want to share something, 
um, that kind of got you all interested and brought you all to my account. So I started growing like that and it doesn't happen overnight. Um, lots of effort, lots of time goes into it and you just make sure that you're showing the real you. This is really nice. Um, what do you do when you hit a roadblock with ideas? Um, I peace out. I zone out. Honestly, I just say, you know what? I'm like sometimes on a Friday, I'm just so fried with work, so fried with like, what do I post on my Instagram? That I'm just like, you know what? I'm just gonna like this. So, so many times you must have seen me just go off sometimes for a day or two because I'm just like enough like I don't want to be like some machine churning out content for the sake of churning out content because maybe the algorithm will ban me or like not feature me a lot so I don't really think about that I think about the fact that I take time off um, I still am on social media I'm just not creating content and posting content but I still am I still know okay what's happening oh there's this trend oh there's that trend oh there's that trend and I'm like okay fine you know maybe I can morph it into my style my way and you kind of you you eventually the time apart and the space that you're taking between like that you're creating between yourself and churning out that content will give you a sort of refresh on what you want to do and what you should do and what you will eventually do don't don't stress yourself out don't force yourself to want to create content just because everyone else is creating amazing content it's hap like everyone's journey is different everyone's abilities are different so just you do you your mental health is better than anything else okay so those are all the questions um i hope i answered everything some of them were very repeated about career how i if i knew what i wanted to do um and yeah i hope i answered them and i hope you got your answers you can always dm me if you want to know anything extra and yeah i'm gonna go now